Hey guys, welcome into Main Street Living. I am your host, Quincy Carr. I'm Brandy Paul. I'm Cheryl Nelson. So happy to be here. It is Christmas week. I cannot believe it. It always sneaks up on us every year. <laughs> and we are all running around, baking, we're wrapping presents, we're having parties. And Brandy, Q and I actually saw each other this past weekend at a little party that I hosted. Q. A little party? That was a what? big party. What are you talking about? That wasn't <laughs> a little party. You had that invitation. Uh, she had a guard. Uh, security no, was at oh the front my. door. Huge. That's Huge. how you party in the holidays. Yeah, yeah, no, it's not like that at all. And Brandy, if you weren't in Nebraska, we would have loved to have you here in Virginia. But Quincy, I think, was the most excited because he got to meet my sister in person. Yes, uh, the, the sister that we had just talked about it either an episode or two ago when you were holding her in the Christmas uh, picture when y'all were little kids. And I'm like, oh, this is, so is she the younger or the older sister? She's like, I am the... I think she said she was the youngest. Is that right? Oh, yeah. She goes, yeah. what do you mean you have to ask? It was yeah. really funny. <laughs> yeah. And then we took a picture right there. You see that picture. Me with the two sisters. So very lovely family. Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. All kinds of excitement going on. And we've got a great show planned for you today. Yes, we, we sure do. We, you know, we're talking about all this goodwill with family, with party. We have two organizations who are spreading that goodwill year round. Trees and soccer, different things, but all benefiting community. That's right. And we're talking traveling as well as heading to a winter wonderland, too. And it's the time of the year for giving. We'll check in with the local food bank. But up next, we'll learn who exactly is behind those silver bells. <laughs> Welcome back. One of the surest signs that the holidays are here and Christmas is coming. I look forward to it every year, hearing the bells, the Salvation Army bells near every shopping center. I love it. Oh, me too. And many of us associate the Salvation Army with Christmas time because of those bell ringers we see out there gathering donations. But the Salvation Army is working to help the community all year round. They are busy. And Major Roger Dupree is here to tell us more. Welcome to Main Street Living. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be with you. So we know that you are a year-round community partner. We thank you for that. What kind of impact does the Salvation Army have, not only around the country, but also in the southern New England community where you are? Well, specifically, I'm, I am um, in Rhode Island. I'm the Rhode Island co coordinator for the Salvation Army. And each year, more than 30,000 individuals uh, seek help from the Salvation Army with things like... Uh, they can't pay their rent and they need help with that. They need help paying their utilities. Uh, they don't have any clothing uh, to wear. They, uh, their furniture has been burned up in a fire. They need food. They, they need any number of issues that put them in crisis. They come to us and the Salvation Army seeks to help them through that situation. Well, uh, Roger, you know, knowing that people are going through what they go through, we know that the food banks have seen record numbers of people needing assistance, uh, especially the past couple of years. So have you seen an increase in need in the communities that you serve? We certainly have. Um, over the in, in Rhode Island, once again, during the pandemic, we uh, over the course of about a year and a half, we served more than one, a million and a half meals during that time. Wow. And each year, uh, our numbers have increased more than 400,000 Meals are provide, provided through our food pantries. We also serve people uh, every weekend. We have a um, community meal that about 150 people come to and, and uh, join together, and, and we're able to feed them and, and meet some of their social needs as well. Nice. Mm. You guys have a lot on your plate there, and we are deep into the holiday season right now. What other special programs does the Salvation Army have for the holidays? Well, you know, during the holidays, we, we start off with Thanksgiving, and, uh, and during Thanksgiving, more than 4,000 families come to us in order to put a Thanksgiving meal on their table. That extra 
uh, uh, resources that are needed for the meal are not readily available to them. And so we help people, more than 4,000 families with that. And as soon as Thanksgiving is over, we're into our Christmas work and uh, more than 8,000 children are being served right now, pro provided toys for Christmas and families are being provided food for the holidays as well. It's a, um, it's a busy time of the year, but it's the most wonderful time of the year because we have a lot of good people who come alongside us and help. Aww. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's busy, but it's also the most wonderful time of the year. And with all the work that you guys are doing out there, you guys have to be in need of something for the season. So let us know, like, how can we uh, help you guys provide for the neighbors that are in need of assistance? You know, this time of year is always, uh, you mentioned right off the start of the show, or the segment here that um, uh, the kettles are, our red kettles are out. And we're always looking for volunteers on those red kettles because the money raised there allows us not only to take care of the holiday needs, but allows us to extend into the into the next year and help people with those very real uh, crisis needs that come up in their lives. So we're always looking for help with kettle workers. We're always looking for more uh, anyone who can help us with a cash donation. You can uh, go to our website that's been that's posted there for you. You can call the Salvation Army closest to you, and they can uh, help direct direct you in that area. We look for people who who uh, clothing has become a very big need for children at this time of the year. We, the need is growing greater and greater, and we're trying to provide more children with clothing at this time of the year. And anyone who can help by buying a new uh, coat for a child or buying a new outfit for a child, that goes a long way in making in meeting the needs of, a, of someone who very much needs your help. And if you do have those donations, let's say you buy some clothes for a child, where would you go to donate that or drop that off? And also with the kettles, I know too, a lot of us don't always carry cash. So is there another way to donate? There is another way to donate. Um, um, you can go to our, our website, which is uh, uh, ctri.salvationarmy.org. And in there, they, they will give you a, an option of uh, donating online. We also have a, a text to give number, 71777. You text uh, yes, um, give to 71777, and um, you'll be able to... Um, provide a cash donation in that way. And um, additionally, if anyone wants to uh, work at a kettle or anything like that, you need to call the Salvation Army closest to the area that you live in. They, they all have a telephone number and they can all direct you back in Rhode Island. They would all direct you back to my office, but whatever area you call from, they'll direct you back to the office closest to, to you and you'll be able to make a difference in people's lives, make a huge difference in people. Okay, so that's where you would go if you have the items that you'd like to donate or drop off, contact your that's local correct. chapter. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you for that. Thank you. All right, well, uh, Roger, we certainly do appreciate it. I mean, you've given us so much information and a little bit of background of why people need to donate. It's, it's still the season of giving, and we certainly do appreciate that. Um, what, uh, well, lastly, what do people like about being a bell ringer? Oh, good question. Uh, well, you know, being a bell ringer makes people f feel like they're a part of the whole giving scene. You know, you want to know the best thing about Christmas, from yeah. my perspective, working at over 40 years in the Salvation Army now, the best thing about it is not that we're able to help people. That's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But I get to see how good people really are, oh people that really want to come alongside and help someone make life better for people. And there's so many of them out there. And when you're standing ringing at a bell, you're thinking, man, I'm making a difference in someone's yeah. life. And that's special, you know. It's wow. a feeling that's hard to, hard to duplicate. Oh, that's so touching. Thank you for everything you do, Major. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to, to be on here with you. And uh Thank you for what you're doing now for the Salvation Army. You're you're making a big difference as well. Awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, uh, Cheryl, up next, you know, it's the most wonderful time of the year, but it's also winter, and we're talking about the winter wonderland. We want to take you to a place where it's Ooh. cold and fun. Stay right Let's there. Let's go. <laughs> Hey, 
Hey guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Uh, Brandy, I know you and I share this, uh, you know, when a break is, you know, is here and school's out and we may be searching for some family friendly holiday activities. <laughs> is there any help near? Yeah, I sure hope so, because I feel like I'm there about three hours in. I'm bored. What do we do? And, you know, maybe we should take a trip to New England because they have some amazing family opportunities for a spectacular real life winter wonderland. I'll play one of your kids because I want to go too. And for the rest of this year, Southwick Zoo in Massachusetts is offering a spectacular display of holiday lights and handcrafted lanterns. You don't want to miss this. Check it out. I am Belinda Blackford and I am the Director of Marketing here at Southwick Zoo. We have Winter Wonderland and the Festival of Illumination. It's actually two events that we've merged together. Festival of Illumination started in September and our theme this year is fairy tales, legends, myths. And Winter Wonderland has been a traditional event held here at Southwick Zoo eight, nine years now. And people look forward to it every year. So we've brought both events together. There's over 200 acres and so you can just imagine the stroll that you get through this event. The lanterns are custom made just for us here. Um, this is from a group of artists that came from Zigong, China, and they came in July. And like last year, they built these exhibits here. Um, we have over 58 exhibits. We started last February putting a design together. And then from that, we implemented it into the rebar, silk, LED lighting, airbrushing. It's extraordinary what takes place to create each piece. I think the favorites, well, extraordinary entry, which is really cool. But as you walk through the park tonight, you will see, I love the castle. The castle's really cool. And you'll take a note of, we have a Humpty Dumpty and the Puss in Boots kind of thing. We have a Sphinx that's huge. We have a mermaid. We have Viking ships. And I think probably one of my favorite is the African myth of uh, the birth of the elephant, as well as the tree of life, another African myth. In addition to the exhibits of the Festival of Illumination, Winter Wonderland, we have the Enchanted Forest, we have Whoville, we have acrobat shows, we have live singing, we have Pringle Cafe, we have fire pits, we have s'mores, we have a train ride through an enchanted forest, a virtual sleigh ride, which is, I have not been on, but it's very cool. Southwick Zoo itself plays a huge role in the community. This particular event, um, Winter Wonderland and the Festival of Illumination, everything that we've put into it, we have um, gone over and above to make sure that the community comes and experiences something enriching and it's the huge wow factor. They walk away feeling as though they've been somewhere special, which they have, and that everything that we've done is tried to be all inclusive of, of everyone, all ages. Not everyone looks forward to a 4.30 darkness until you have to come here, and yay, it's 4.30, and they get to see all this wonderful display. I love what she said there. The only good thing about 4.30 becoming darkness time when the sun sets is that the lights start up so early and it's a great time to get out there and check it out. You will find me in the castle. I love it. And I'll accept it. The 4.30 getting dark thing. All right. For that beautiful yard art, I that that's all right because it is amazing. All right. Southwick Zoo's Winter Wonderland and the Festival of Illumination will run through the end of the year. All you have to do is head over to southwickszoo.com for details and your tickets. All right. Sign me up. It sounds like a lot of fun. In the meantime, don't go anywhere because coming up next on Main Street Living, we will share environmentally friendly travel tips that maybe we can use when we go to Massachusetts. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned.
guys, welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, ladies, traveling and exploring new places is, is actually one of the greatest adventures in life. But we're all travel fans here on this show. However, our resident travel bug person and meteorologist, Cheryl, you know who you are right there. Uh, you know, <laughs> you're going to want to take some notes in this next segment, I think. I'm ready. Yeah, that's right. Now, we all want to protect the environment, right? We love to explore our world. We want to keep it beautiful. So we're going to get some tips on how to do that from a couple of experienced road trippers joining us today. Welcome adventure travel photographers, Giselle and Stephen. Thank you so much for joining us. Professional road trippers basically sounds like the best job in the world. <laughs> a little bit first about what it is you do. So we get the opportunity to travel all over the nation and the world, road tripping and highlighting different outdoor aspects of our photography and videography. Awesome. We love having you guys on the show. You're so much fun. And as a meteorologist, I study the environment and I know that we're all aware of our carbon footprints these days and how much travel can unfortunately add to that. So how do you two try to keep your travel environmentally friendly? Because I know it can be tough to do. Yeah, well, we've tried to do a lot more road tripping rather than air travel, especially the mm -hmm. past few years, just because Road tripping is a little bit safer on the environment, and we can do a lot more slow travel. A lot of times with air flights, you're traveling multiple times. Sometimes it's a 10-hour flight where we can road trip and do a little one-hour uh, drive and see completely different stuff every single time. And it's also good that nowadays there's some technology and platforms where you can actually donate to organizations to offset your carbon footprint, whether it's like miles driven or um, flights flown. But it's it's nice because we can also go back and keep track of all of our mileage. And then there's organizations that will go out and like plant trees to help carbon emissions and all that kind of stuff. Oh, awesome. yeah. So being in a vehicle a lot of the time, how do you stay comfortable and connected while you're on the road? We kind of built out the back of our forerunner. So rather than sleeping in a tent the whole time, we have some drawers that we can store all of our clothes, food. We bring our portable power station so we can work on the road. It's called a Jackery. It's super easy for us, especially because G can plug in blow dry her hair if she needs to. I can <laughs> plug in some stuff and I can get stuff done on my computer. It recharges everything we do. So I feel like we do road tripping, but it's a much more luxury version it's of like road tripping. <laughs> glamping. Um, we, we bring like a portable uh, air mattress. And so that way, since we have our generator, we can just plug it in and it'll blow up within a minute or two. And then we also have like our fridge. So we've, we've made it more comfortable yeah. while we've been able to travel. You are my kind of girl. I glamp. I do not camp. And the Jackery <laughs> sounds like something I need. And is this solar powered? How exactly does it work? Yeah. So the Jackery has two different solar panels. And basically, we just set those outside while we're cooking up breakfast or we'll put them on top of our car to get depending on where the sun is coming in and it recharges it. So it's a really easy way for us to continue to stay out there without having to rely on anything else. Wow. So if you're in your vehicle most of the time, I would think some people think, okay, I'm pretty, pretty limited in my choices, but it sounds like you guys have had some great experiences in your car still counting as travel. Absolutely. I think there's a kind of stigma on the word travel because when you think of travel, you kind of get the feeling that you have to go super far away or travel internationally or um, cross, you know, West coast to East coast, but that's really not the case. And I think with COVID that really showed us that there's so much in your backyard that there's to explore, especially for us in California. So traveling by car, whether it's like an hour to six hours away, you can see so much out there just from taking a little road trip in the same state. Ooh, and you have a luxury that you live in California, so there's so <laughs> much to see out there. If you're in Delaware or Rhode Island, you know, you drive not very far, and you're in a different <laughs> state. So we're curious, what is your best advice for a memorable road trip? Because it's the holidays, a lot of people are going to be on the roads. I think that it's really, really fun if you, we, we're huge planners. I feel like if you're just driving and you're 
Oh, there's a lot of things you'll just drive right by and you won't necessarily know it's there, especially if you're road tripping for the holidays, trying to get to a family destination. If you hop on and do some research on some local blogs, you can find a lot of little hidden gems to kind of break up the drive. So instead of doing like an eight hour drive to Northern California, we'll normally do like an hour and a half stop, check out some stuff, do another hour or two, check out some hot springs, do another hour or two, go for a hike and it breaks up the drive and is a lot more enjoyable. Do you have any, I got to know, travel snack, must-haves in your car? I always need something to munch on <laughs> when I'm traveling. We're boom chicka pop people. The popcorn. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah it's good stuff. It's <laughs> oh, dangerous. Yeah. And peanut butter pretzels. That's yeah. the other one. Yes, <laughs> boom chicka pop. All about that. And while you're eating that popcorn, how about a favorite destination? You guys have been to so many places. I've been following you on Instagram. If you had to pick one fave, what is it? Probably. I, I feel would... like at least in the U.S., my favorite place to road trip is up in the PNW right now. We just did that earlier this summer. What's that? And being able to hike around like Mount Rainier and go up to the North oh. Cascade National Park, Washington, Oregon. Yeah, area. Washington, <laughs> Oregon is just completely <laughs> insane up there. Awesome. PNW Pacific, Pacific Northwest. Northwest. <laughs> yes. oh, guys, I gotta All get right, up so on the lingo. Looking for ideas, they want to follow your adventures. How can they follow you too and learn more about Jackery Solar Generator? So you can check us out on all platforms where the Lovers Passport and theloverspassport.com. And if you guys want to check out Jackery, check out jackery.com. It's also Jackery on all of their social media handles. Highly recommend it makes for a great Christmas present. Ooh, and before we go, tell us, what are you guys doing for the holidays? Are you actually staying put for once? We are. <laughs> <laughs> We're staying home to recharge a little bit because we have some big goals for next year and a lot of big international travel potentially. So we'll see. You guys are teasing us. So I guess we're going to be <laughs> following you to find out where you're going in 2023. We wish you all the best. Happy holidays to you. I'm glad that you guys are home and we can't wait to see your adventures next year. Thank Thanks you. So Thanks so much. For Happy us. holidays. Folks. Oh, oh my gosh, Brandy. I love them. I love it. Just, I love what they said. There is so much in your own backyard, an hour, five hours away, whatever that maybe you haven't seen yet. So great. It's so true. So many times we focus on things far away and we overlook what's right there. So I think that's very good advice. All right. Well, we've got a lot more coming up here on Main Street Living. In fact, coming up next, we will meet the team working to green up Baton Rouge, sticking with the environmentally friendly people here. Don't go away. Welcome back. We can all agree that trees, green spaces, they are beautiful, but we're only really just beginning to completely understand trees and all the ways they can help our environment. Yeah, Brandy, um, you know, and having a thriving tree canopy in our cities is a great way to help keep temperatures down in the summer and, of course, keep the air cleaner all year long. You like that, Cheryl, right? I always like that. And the folks at Baton Rouge Green in Louisiana are on a mission to green up their city by planting more trees and keeping the trees already there healthy. Let's meet their team. Baton Rouge Green is a 501c3 nonprofit formed in 1987 here in Baton Rouge to help preserve the existing urban canopy. And in some cases, if we can, grow the canopy uh, for all the benefits that trees provide the citizens here. My goal as executive director is actually just to keep the wheels on and keep everybody moving because I'm the only non-tree person on the staff. So I try to make sure that we have the funding that we need, the direction that we need, um, and make sure that my team has what they need to do what they want to do because they are passionate, they know what they want to do, and they know how to do it. They're brilliant young uh, professionals and uh, they know a lot about trees. My goal as a tree stewardess is to continue the management of the 4,000 trees within the Living Roadways Project to help continue the benefit that trees provide to the city. As the Agroforestry Equity Coordinator here at Baton Rouge Green, what I do is I extend reliable research into the community in a form of education and practice. Agroforestry is basically growing agricultural products in the forest. So here we're growing citrus fruit at 
in underserved communities. And what I do is I increase access to green spaces. I add to the canopy coverage of Baton Rouge and I alleviate food insecurity in underserved areas by planting citrus trees. So my goal as Director of Operations is to make sure that we execute our programming in a safe and meaningful and impactful way to the public. We're doing a lot with really resilient native species and we've got uh, multi-storied structured habitats going in, uh, which is great for urban spaces. We have a statewide outreach program and we've really expanded our network. We're actually helping a lot of other communities too, besides Baton Rouge Green. And that's something that's pretty special. My name is Christopher Cooper. Uh, I am the program manager of Baton Rouge Green. And uh, we, we have a multitude of programs uh, here at Baton Rouge Green, uh, everything from right-of-way management to uh, community planting, to citrus harvesting and, and care. Within all of those, those programs, we uh, are, are going through the kind of the mission, the aim, the goal of of helping to create a greener Baton Rouge to have equitable access of, uh, of green space and uh, access to trees and the, the many benefits of trees throughout the, the, the region of EBR and beyond. The cool thing about what Baton Rouge Green does is that everybody benefits. So even, uh, even though there's you know, a group of people that uh, tend to support us, anywhere from a $25 membership to thousands of dollars a year for a Living Roadway sponsorship, everybody gets to benefit from those gifts to Baton Rouge Green because we go out and care for trees that literally help everybody in the community. This team is forward thinking, ambitious, and determined to make a positive impact on the forest community in Baton Rouge. I just love what they're doing for the community and the trees, the citrus, oranges. I wish I could plant these in my yard in Virginia. They would never make it here. <laughs> no. Yeah. They wouldn't make it in Nebraska either. I love their passion, though, for what they have for their community. It's great. Yes. Yeah, it's so cool. And, of course, you can find more about the great work being done in Baton Rouge at batonrougegreen.com. And let's stick with that theme of helping our communities and our neighbors, because coming up next, how you can help your neighbors this holiday season. Welcome back to Main Street Living. Brandy, Quincy, the past couple of years have been some of the busiest ever for food banks across the country. <sighs> Between the pandemic, inflation, and the overall high cost of living, many of our neighbors have found themselves needing a little help, many for the first time. Yeah, that's right, Cheryl. And with the holidays upon us, our friends over at St. Mary's Food Bank in Arizona are here to share how they are meeting the needs for their neighbors and how you can help as well. Let's welcome back Jerry Brown to Main Street Living. How you doing there, Jerry? Good to, good to be with you. Awesome. Awesome. Good to have you back. Always good to see when people are doing great things for their communities and stuff. And it seems like inflation is hitting every part of our budgets these days, like Cheryl was talking about. Um, how are you feeling the impact at the food bank? You know, it's amazing. I think that that um, we thought that when the pandemic hit two years ago, that we had seen a high point in uh, the 56 year history of St. Mary's Food Bank. We've been around since 1967, hadn't seen anything like that two years ago. But inflation since about March or April of this year has even taken us past what we saw during the pandemic. Uh, this, just this last week, we were up 63 percent in the number of people that we had uh, that we were serving over this time last year. It's been an amazing climb. It hasn't reached its peak yet. Uh, during Thanksgiving, we've, 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 we've had 19,000 families went home with turkeys, food boxes and produce bags. Now we're gearing up for Christmas. Things haven't abated very much, and we're, we're anticipating seeing long lines again for this holiday. Wow, wow. Jerry. All right, you kind of answered my question a little bit, but thinking about, okay, let's just get through Christmas. Let's make it through. How do you anticipate things looking as you start the year? Yes, and it's very difficult to ramp up for 30 days between Thanksgiving and Christmas. But then when you get past um, Christmas and past the holidays, so many it's of it's of it's of mind for so many people during the holidays. They want to volunteer, they want to help, they want to make donations, they want to do food drives. But um, when January comes, the same amount of people still need to be helped, and there aren't as many folks to do that. And we understand that people's focus go to other ways, but we like we'd like to 
to help them, uh, you know, keep the food bank of mind, keep the fact that your neighbors are in mind. And so many folks that we've seen here who made donations to the food bank before, maybe, maybe they knew how to get here because they made food donations, they made cash donations in the past. Now they're on the other side of the line needing help. And we haven't seen that in a long time at the food bank. And it's something that's, you know, it's very concerning. And we're hoping that with gas prices coming down and some of the other things that are abating a little bit, that it will help people kind of get back on their feet. In the meantime, we'll be here to help them. Wow. Yeah. Being there to help is always good, obviously, because the end of the year is here. OK, it's coming right up. And that means that we're thinking about our final donations of the year. Um, i got to ask you. I understand that there's an easier way for Arizona residents uh, to help with the St. Mary's mission. So tell us about the the tax credit there in Arizona. Right. Well, no, nobody likes paying taxes, right? I mean, <laughs> nobody nobody wants to do that. And you wonder where your taxes are going, going to go. But the Arizona tax credit is a fantastic way where you can actually uh, tell where your money to go, where, where it's, where it's going to go, where it's going to help. For individuals up to $400 and for families up to $800, you can make a donation on you can make a, a, a donation on your taxes. That money comes right back to you if you if you're paying taxes. Uh, so so you at least have a say in where that money goes. And, and what is what is $800 do for St. Mary's Food Bank? That'll feed 80 families for a week. Wow. So it's a fantastic opportunity for people to with money that they were going to have to uh, th- th- that is going to wind up right back in, in, into their into their wallets. They're able to decide which where that money is going to go and how it can help families. And it's a really great opportunity. And uh, the Arizona tax credit has been a real boon for not only St. Mary's Food Bank, but a lot of nonprofits in Arizona. It's, it's given people an opportunity to say, hey, I want this money to go there. And you, you don't really have that opportunity very much when it comes to taxes. You mm. bet. So All true. right. So cash is king. That's clear. But are there other ways people can help? Do you need manpower? Do you need just food donations? Anything else? Food donations are very important because food prices have gone up a lot. Uh, we're buying more food than we have at any other time of the year. So food donations are very important. Things like canned fruits and vegetables, uh, peanut butter. Those are things that we need all the time. When it comes to hands, absolutely. Especially once the uh, holiday season ends, people are, are more than willing to help during Thanksgiving and Christmas. We love having them here to do that. But January rolls around and those people tend to disappear. We would love to have folks come and help. Uh, we have afternoon and morning shifts where you can pack emergency food boxes. Or if you like having more of a of a person-to-person relationship, you can help distribute those boxes to folks that come to the food bank for help. So uh, we have shifts uh, Tuesday through Saturday for box packing, Monday through Friday for distribution. Uh, If you have a couple of hours of your time, you can make a huge difference. Yeah. So, you know, i got to ask you, are there any memorable uh, moments that you recall just seeing the faces of not just the people giving back, but the people that are receiving it? You know, you see people that are, especially during Thanksgiving time, you know, uh, we have a non-contact distribution uh, where, where folks don't leave their cars. We're still mindful of the COVID situation and some of the right. things that are, that are going on right now. But you see tears. You see people tapping their hearts. You, you understand how much it means to them each time. And when I've had opportunity to speak to people you know, the tears come and they never thought they were going to, nobody wants to come to a food bank. Nobody wants to be in a situation where they can't feed their families themselves. And so there's a, there's a point of pride there that, that you have to, that you understand. And, and when, when you see people and sometimes when they come to the food bank, that's the point where they break down. They didn't break down at home. They didn't break down in front of their family. But when they're seeing that, when they're seeing that they're going to be able to feed their family for this week, when they weren't sure if that was going to be the case, especially for first timers, that's when the tears flow and the emotions really start to hit. And that's when you realize that you're in the right place helping people. Um, and there sure you go. Yeah, there you, you go. So now you got to tell us how can viewers get more involved and get more information? Absolutely. Go to stmarysfoodbank.org. That's the easiest way. And that's if you need help or if you can help. Mm. If, if, if you're a family that needs, needs a, a food box, we have the food to take care of you. We have 900 locations 
around the state of Arizona with, that are through agency partners, and we will get one to the closest to you. If you can help, whether it's through a food drive, whether it's through volunteer time, or when it's through that donation, and every $10 can feed a family for a week, go to stmarysfoodbank.org, especially here as we get to the end, of the end of the year and people are thinking about making donations before tax season ends. This is a great time to help feed a family. You thank bet. You, Jerry. Jerry, thank you so much for joining us. Great reminders. Thank All right, you. coming up next, it is time to play. Really? Welcome back. All right, maybe you're like the rest of the planet coming down off of the World Cup high, got more Americans than ever paying attention to soccer. But the benefits of youth sports are huge, well-documented. Unfortunately, playing on a competitive team can often come with a pretty hefty price tag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no lies detected there, Brandy. And that's <laughs> often a barrier that low-income kids just can't overcome. Fortunately, some players are able to stay on the team with the backing from a local business and even organization. And that is wonderful. One group in San Diego is helping kids excel in sports with the generous support of PNC Bank. Take a look. Surf Soccer has been around for over 30 years. We're based here in San Diego, but we are the premier national youth sports brand in soccer. Our mission is to create experiences and opportunities for kids. And we do that here mostly in San Diego with our 1,000 kids. But we also do it through our events where we really help kids chase their dreams. PNC Bank sponsorship helps the kids here in a couple of ways. One, it is to continue to help fund facilities like this where the kids can come play soccer. Two, it is really through our scholarship program. There are a lot of kids in San Diego that have incredible levels of talent, but they can't afford to play on a team like surf. And so a lot of our sponsorship dollars go back into scholarships to give an opportunity for kids who are low to moderate income to play on one of the elite teams in the U.S. You have teams from all over the world and specifically from all over the U.S. coming here to compete for the title of best of the best. And that also attracts most of the college coaches here in the country. So we have usually about 700 college coaches here at SURF looking to fill out their rosters. And then we have about a thousand teams playing over two weekends. We're out here today at the SURF Cup and there's over 60,000 people that attend this tournament over a two day weekend. Um, and so everyone from the border in Chula Vista to Oceanside who has kids that play soccer are playing soccer here at Del Mar and Oceanside these two weekends. In the 30 year history of Surf Cup, we've actually only allowed three partners to partner with us and be next to our brand. We are incredibly picky about who we have next to our brand because we want to make sure they're mission aligned, right? PNC is literally one of the only people we've ever allowed to be in here as a sponsor because we know how committed they truly are to the community and how committed they truly are to kids. We just felt like this would be the greatest impact to the community and to youth and to get, it, and get to be a part of that, right? To get to have our sponsorship dollars go into scholarships to help kids that can't afford to be on a premier club like this uh, was something really special. We picked soccer here in San Diego because it is the most played sport for kids. You know, and you think about our environment, um, we've got sun 12 months out of the year. Kids play the sport around the clock. And so we felt like not only do we get this great chance to reach out across the community through the sport, but then our money goes to give back to help kids. Having a partner like PNC who is community oriented and cares about the development of youth in the community is amazing because our missions are completely aligned and we're both driven by helping develop kids and in this case through sport in San Diego. It's exciting to be a part of surf soccer for PNC Bank um, but this is not the end for us it's just the beginning. We continue to look forward to investing back into youth, arts and especially the military here. I mean San Diego is a military town um, and we are giant supporters of the men and women um, that fight for our freedom. Well, as a mom whose children participate in sports, hmm. I have seen the benefit that it has on them. And it's so great to know that all kids, no matter their background, can have that opportunity. Yes, that is fantastic. And you can find out more information about PNC Bank on their website, pnc.com. Love everything they're doing. 
That's right. Just like we love doing this show. So stay right there because there's still more of Main Street Living coming up next. Welcome back to Main Street Living. So many good things happening in our world during the holiday season and all year round. From all of us at Main Street Living, we hope you have a very happy holiday season. That's right. And you can also unwrap other episodes, our past episodes, and even our newest ones on our Cox Contour app as well. Yes, and catch us at Mondays, 9 p.m. local time for more episodes of Main Street Living. And as we take another stroll down Main Street, until then, happy holidays to you and your family. <laughs>